Okay. Well, um, I'll start with basic things. For example, um, you have to keep water or something to moisturize your mouth all the time with you because that dry mouth is a big problem. As far as the dry mouth, that adds to the problem swallowing. But I need to eat um, soft foods, uh, soups, stews, um, mashed potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes, um, things like that that are easy to get down. And with my particular surgery, uh, the first time in, in 2000, um, they took out all the bone in my top, my maxilla, my top um, joint, um, my, uh, my maxilla, they took out the bone and all the teeth. So I don't have any support there to chew on the right side or to swallow with that par paralysis. So I chew everything on the left side and then have to be very, very, very careful in swallowing um, because if I'm not, it will go down the wrong way and I will choke, which sometimes it's just a little <coughs> getting it up. So those are issues that I've had to adjust to um, this post-cancer and post-treatment is my new normal. So these are things that I'll live with for the rest of my life. I'm not complaining. I'm very thankful to be here. But, you know, there are things that you have to adjust to and those are a few. Well, now, Christmas is when you can't uh, open your mouth wide. And I've had Christmas too. I've had to use the Therabyte, which helps you open your mouth wide. And I've also used the popsicle stick method right after my first surgery. I could barely get one popsicle stick between my teeth. So over several months, I, I worked that those muscles to help stretch them. So trismus is something you probably will deal with with head and neck uh, cancer and any surgery in your mouth. Total exhaustion starting out from when I went home after the treatments. Mm -hmm. Until then, I still had all my energy. But I would sleep to about 6 o'clock in the morning and get up and go sit on the sofa. <clears throat> One of the things that they caution you about is tightening of the jaws. So I had an apparatus. I was doing a study for Vanderbilt, and it was like a space deal. You know, they just forced your jaw open with weights in the back. So I'd put that on in, in the morning, watch TV, and supposed to do 15, 20 minutes, and I'm sound asleep for 45 minutes. <laughs> with the jaw stretched wide open. There's a lot of side effects from my surgeries. Uh, uh, the radiation really took a lot away. I would say more so than the laryngectomy itself. Um, I have a tube which needs constant cleaning uh, eight to a dozen times a day. I have a valve between my esophagus and trachea that allows me to do speaking as I do. It needs to be cleaned. And for months, I couldn't see it. And again, my wife would use these specialty brushes and clean the valves and clean the tubes. I do it all pretty independently now. Uh, there's constant dull pain that I do take medications every day for and half the last four years. There's really no painful no laryngectomy itself. But my pectoral flaps that we use to cover the holes in my neck uh, 
still felt pretty stretched and going to pass it. So there's some uncomfortableness. Well, one of the side effects from the radiation that I had, because I mean, radiation gave me blisters like crazy inside the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to be able to eat the hottest Chinese food you could throw at somebody. I cannot eat anything spicy anymore. I mean, just the least bit. Uh, spice heat-wise, it just burns. So that's a big change. Uh, we joke that I can't drink any more wine because it's so acidic it burns. But vodka works. <laughs> Martinis are great. <laughs> But we got through that, and losing weight, I thought it was fabulous. I finally got to lose weight really easy. Sit on the sofa and lose Sleep. a pound <laughs> because of all the radiation and, and the chemicals, medicines they give you. But other than that, I really didn't have any, I lost my energy big time. And I remember walking, finally walking at the front door to go to a short, front walk to pick up the newspaper I'm like, this is great. Then I walked the end of my little street and there's only eight houses on it. Well that look felt like it took forever. But every day you just walk it and you get your energy back. Where you finally walk in a quarter of a mile. Whoopee. Then it was up to point a mile and a half, maybe two miles. I didn't have any that I know of. No one said anything. Like, you lost so much weight, Bill, you look sick again. No, they were all supportive. I have also learned that making lists, the radiation has affected my memory. Um, and I have to keep lists of everything. Or I forget. And I keep a journal and write down everything that I did during the day. Uh, before I go to bed, I can refer back to it if I need to remember something. Um, but if I don't write it down, it's just like, to me, it didn't happen. And so partly I write it down just to have a record of my life because I don't remember past about 24 hours. Um, and I make lists all the time, all day long. I have post-it notes everywhere um, just to remind myself of what I need to do. Um, that's another coping strategy. Keep a journal, daily journal. Write your questions down. <laughs> Not only the medicine you have to take, how often, what dosage, because it changes every week. But they give you exercises, jaw stretches, all kinds of stuff. You know, you need to do this six times a day. You need to do this three times a day. When did you do them? Well, I don't know. The other uh, diary I keep is, how do I feel? What's happening to me emotionally as I'm walking this walk? That's helped me a lot. After surgery, slip back and go how much strength that's brought for me. And even when I meet with people in hospitals that, uh, that will want to see a laryngectomy before they have one, or uh, my uh, laryngectomy group that meets at Gildas in Kansas City, we speak with the graduating speech language pathologist and that blog that catharsis of how do I feel helps me feel stronger to be able to help those people so prepare prepare yourself mentally keep a track of your journey don't be afraid to look back on it I would also say um I had a good family and friend um, group of people to support me through all of this. They were loving and accepting and 
wanted me to come back and so supportive. And I would just encourage anybody who has had cancer of any kind, but in my case, had neck cancer, to check out the Gilda's Club closest to you.